today we are reviewing the high grade Zako 2 black tristar I just gonna say before we all start it's a shame that they removed the, the information about the the MSRP on the numbers right here it's not shown anymore so I have to look it up in the internet so this model kit is released in February 2013 with a price of 1600 yen relatively cheap for a recent model kit opening the box we are faced with one two three three plastic bags of runners and the usual manual or instructions so what I'm interested in in the manual so what I'm interested on the manual is the the colors where is it? where is it this this guy this guide color guide so we are faced with how many colors two three four five ten ten colors for this model kit and I'm not sure if all of these are present on the plastic or it will be painted or on the stickers so moving on to the runners runner A which is colored like the usual frame of gum plus the gray color yeah, there's nothing special about it. It's like the, the frame of the Gunpla as well. Runner B, it contains three colors. Oh, um, I think it's four. It's like a little bit darker gray. I won't call it black because it's not really dark enough to be called black. It's like dark gray. And then we have a dark blue. I don't know if you can see it, but I think you can. And you have a white color and then this is a purple or pink purple I would I would say this is purple purple parts for the chest and for the rest of the purple parts moving on to runner C we have two types of runner C we have C1 which is the same as the dark blue runner or dark blue color parts on the runner A C so it's mostly dark blue then we have a lot of dark blue parts and then for the C2 I think this is for the I think this is like the this is like the dark gray and the runner A as well you can see mostly it contains the the armor for the hands and then these are for knees I think and yeah that's it for runner D it's like I don't uh, these are the hose you know the the one around the waist and the head and as I don't know if you can see it on camera but it's a little bit clear it's like a clear dark blue I don't, you can see it on the camera but it's clear dark blue just trust me on this runner E it's like the dark gray as well let me just verify that yeah it's like the dark gray color which contains the mostly the armaments the guns the bazookas the magazines of the gunpla and we have a rather big runner of polycaps for high grade we have a lot in for this gunpla so for stickers, we have two types of stickers. We have the foil ones. We have the one for the eyes and for the color correcting stickers for white and red. I believe that's what you need to put on the, the legs, but I'm not sure. And we have a clear back stickers that looks like water slide decals, but it's not a water slide decal. These are stickers as well for, the, for this Gumpla. So you can see, if you watch the anime, there are three types of Blacko Tri-Stars. That, that's why it's called Tri-Stars. So you have two, three, and six. It's it's up to you which one you would like to use. So, yeah. Those are the stickers. Rather small than the rest of the SDs I built. So that's it for the box and the runners. I will be right back when I finish building the Gumpla. So here's what it looks like built without any stickers or panel wash. I just don't want to deal with sticker residues and cleaning up the existing panel wash when I decide to paint the kit. 
So what's my first impression? Even though, even though this is called the high grade Zako 2 black tri-stars, it is actually mostly colored dark blue. I hope you can see it on camera but it's actually dark blue, dark gray, and purple. And mostly yeah, and white as well. So actually I prefer it to be dark blue than black because if it's black it would be boring in my opinion and it would just blend with the shadows in the background right to give you a sense of size of this kit this is what it looks like next to the anti-grade rx782 and high grade penelope so this kit has three armaments it have a machine gun a bazooka and a heat hawk that has no beam effects just a straight up one colored heat hawk other than the weapons you also get a spare magazine for the machine gun that you can that you can put on a side skirt right here you can equip it in the slot right here like this you will also get a weapon holder that you can equip it on the shoulder right here on the longer shoulder armor and just slide it up like that it can hold both the bazooka like this you can just slot it in and then it can hold the heat hawk as well so just like the bazooka there's like a small clamp thing for the heat hawk right there then you can just slot it in like that it locks in and then for the machine gun, it actually can hold the machine gun as well, just at the back of it, right there. So you can put it like, like this, there's a tab for it, and then there's a slot on the side of the machine gun. It actually doesn't show up like easily, so that's really good if you want to paint it. There's like a random slot right there. You don't have to fill it, It's for a, it has a purpose. So it's just like that. It holds three of its armaments on one shoulder, like that. So basically, doing it like this, you can carry all of its armaments and this spare machine gun, like put it on a side skirt, like that. It can carry all of it at once, in two methods. So you can equip it, oh, it doesn't actually slot in on the, on the other side. The only problem I have with this mag magazine is it doesn't slot in properly like this or maybe it's just you have to trim it a little bit so there you go i have to trim it a little bit to just slot it in there you go it so basically all the armaments can be equipped on this kit in two methods you can put it this way that it's all on the shoulder like that or you can equip it like one hand on the, the bazooka and then you can one hand on the machine gun then the heat hawk you can equip the heat hawk you can equip the heat hawk on this side as well it has a tab right here you can equip it on the side skirt like this it doesn't hold it as well as the one on the shoulder as you can see I can just tap it and it's out already because the I don't know if you can see it on camera but the the slot on the side skirt is just not too deep enough for the tabs right included right here so maybe you have to modify it a little bit you can just so actually while we're at it you can equip it all all of the armaments at once like that and then we can do the shake test nothing's falling apart but one thing is one thing worth mentioning is that this horn this is by the way a optional horn you can equip it the model kit also comes with a head part that doesn't have any holes in it like this so it's just a regular tristar zaku so you don't have to put a horn on it this horn is not really installed pretty well on the head as you can see just a little bump like this will get it removed right so be careful with that you might want to glue it in or cement it in it's up to you so other than the head part that doesn't have a hole in it you will also get a less detailed horn right there you can compare it 
So this one is a little less detailed than this one. So I will use this one instead. And I will use the one with a hole in it. So other than the head part, the armaments, and the spare magazine, you will also get some poly caps that you can just use on the other model kits. It's just the regular poly caps. And then you'll also get three more hands. So you have in total five hands. So you have two holding hands like that two holding hands you have a uh, one left close hand right there there's no really purpose for it and you have a set of trigger hands a left and a right for the heat hawk you can equip it using the holding hands like that since it doesn't have a tab on it because the trigger hands has a tab in it if I can show you right here it has a tab in it for the bazooka and the beam rifle so if you want to display the model kit with the beam rifle or the bazooka in hand you have to use the trigger hands for it the bazookas and the machine gun has tabs in it and then you can just slot it in the trigger hands right there and you can just close it in by the way the the bazookas and the machine gun has tabs on both sides so you can equip it on left or right trigger hands. So you can display this model kit holding both the bazooka and the machine gun. So if you want to display it with the bazooka, I would recommend it equipping it on the right hand of the model kit. Because it has less interference with the shoulder armor right here than the spiky shoulder armor, right? So I recommend equipping the bazooka on the right hand and then the machine gun on the right hand. On the left hand actually let's do it and then let's do a shake test with both of them equipped so you can see you can equip it like this this is what i would recommend but one thing before i do the shake test let's move this forward first so you can see this yeah this thing falls off quite easily just like i said earlier because of the slot of the side skirt and the machine gun even though you equip it with the trigger hands so you can see this thing at the back of it it interferes with the with the arm already even though it's not on it like that you can't equip the machine gun like pointing straight with the arm because this thing interferes with the arm itself so yeah you can you will have to put it sideways like that and it's not really good in my opinion even though you you can try it on this side of the arm it's the same thing I guarantee when I do the shake test with this on the side skirt, it will just fall easily. So I'll just put it on this side and let's do the shake test with it. Yeah, the bazooka comes off easily as well. Maybe this thing is just too heavy for the arm if you do the shake test. But honestly, the shake test is like the, the worst case scenario, right? No one actually plays with the model kit like shaking it that, that much, right? It's like when you show it to a kid and then they play with it at least you know what will happen to it but yeah so that's the worst case scenario you won't, you might lose the the bazooka and the trigger hand so basically that's it for the weapons and the spare parts i gotta say this model kit is moderately detailed for a high grade especially the back so you can see here the back is very detailed and the legs as well those two parts are really detailed but the other parts are not so detailed as you can see it drops off again the horn drops off again i'll just remove it so you can see the other parts are not are not so detailed as the back and the legs the most insulting part of it is that these are detailed but it's just one color it's mostly color inaccurate it's just one dark blue color and to fix that they gave you a uh, a foil stickers for it that are mostly for the backpack except the mono eye and it's still color inaccurate if you compare it to the manual the inside of the thrusters are supposed to be red and there are more color inaccurate parts for it I'll just show you on this side so yeah other than the pipes that I showed you earlier that are mostly clear there's actually no clear part for the eye but the good thing is, the plastic for the mono eye, it actually has a pr plastic protruding part right there. I hope you can see it. 
So you can easily hand paint it or you can use the Gundam marker if you want to instead of the pink mono eye. It's, a, it's totally up to you. For the rest of the stickers, you can expect it to suck because these stickers have clear background on it. And what are you expecting if you're gonna use it on the dark colored parts, right? It will show the background really easily and it will look bad, I bet. The good thing is, Jira Work Water Slides are available on the market, so you can just buy those instead of this. Anyway, another good thing for this model kit specifically is that there are no hollow parts to be seen so far. As you can see, there's no hollow parts. It also has a, a hole for the action base, which is really nice. Right there. You can also expect a lot of seam lines on this kit, starting from shoulders to legs. There's a huge seam line on the bazooka as well, right there in the middle. So if you want to paint this kit, good luck fixing those seam lines. Because some of those seam lines are comes with the mold line as well. Right there, there's like a square mold line. And there's a seam line in between, right? That's actually funny, you have to clean it up. It will be really hard to seal that seam line and the mold line. And the, and the machine gun, there's a huge mold line. From this part goes all the way from this part. This one's easily cleanable if you just want to sand it. But yeah, just be aware it has some seam lines and mold lines, just like the usual average gumpla. So moving on to the articulation, starting from the head, you can move it like forward and backward that much, and then from up to bottom, up and down, and just a little bit of side to side. Just barely any movement from side to side. You can barely rot rotate it as well. Right? It's barely rotating. For the shoulder armors, it has two different shoulder armors, right? This one, the spiky boy, you can just put it like that. And this. And put it sideways, just a little bit as well. And for the other one, you can just rotate it like that, that much. That's it for those shoulder armors. For the arm, first of all, you can of course expect a 360. You can expect a little bit of upwards motion like that. But it's usually blocked by the shoulder armor from both sides, see? So if you wanna have more sideways motion for the arm, you will have to do it like this way. And it's really not good, in my opinion. And then the, the arm, you can actually move it forward by that much. And just backward by a little bit. Now also expect a 360 from the upper arm. And then the elbow bend like that much. And the usual ball joint hand, like that. For the up, upper body, you can expect a little, a little bit of forward and backward. And just a little bit of side to side. It doesn't rotate at all. So it's just static like front facing. For the skirts, the front skirt can only be lifted up to there. That's it for the front skirt. Side skirt, very limited articulation as well. Just like that. The back skirt doesn't articulate at all. That's it. It's static for the back skirt. For the back, let me show you the only articulation for it. It's just the thrusters. You can just move it up and down. Moving on to the legs. First of all, you can just barely rotate it like that. This model kit has barely any rotation on most of its parts. Upwards by just a little bit because it's easily blocked by the front skirt. And what will you expect from the static back skirt? You can only move it like that much. For the elbow bend, you can just do that much. It's blocked by this part. This part is actually separated to the lower leg. So if you, if you have an elbow bend, oh no, a knee bend, you can see that this part is actually installed on the frame 
and you can just show it like that right it's actually worth mentioning that the the thrusters at the back are moving up and down right these thrusters are actually static so it doesn't move at all for the feet that's it for the articulation up forward and backward and then side to side there are some articulation for the weapon as well the grip can be moved by that much and then the scope can be moved by that much as well this trigger actually moves as well so if you want to dis just pose it equipping it on the shoulder or not on the shoulder you can easily do that with this articulation oh, for the machine gun the scope actually moves the scope moves the same with the bazooka and the grip moves sideways instead of up and down so you can equip it like this right but if you wanna equip all the weapons you will not be able to do this right for the bus for the heat hawk no, no articulation at all so yeah that's basically it so to summarize the articulation for this kit is less than an average high grade it is also worth mentioning that you will do a lot of color correcting if you want to display it in true anime colors but for sure it, this will look better when you paint it it's just gonna be a little bit difficult because of the seam lines and the mold lines also the masking you have to do for the back part good luck with that i gotta say i only built a few zaku kits so far and i'm impressed so that's it for the review i won't grade the kits anymore if you like the kit after hearing all the good things and its flaws then buy it i apologize for the terrible lighting and the quality of this video as i'm still fixing my stuff but yeah if you want to see more of these review videos or some build videos please consider subscribing